So yes, you know, we, we, we've talked about how this election is different from the previous one. You know, there's the new beavers coming in, there's the 25% population being participatory in this election process and, and all of that. There's, there's a large, youthful population participating in the election itself. What are the indices that should guide us in, in, in choosing our next leaders as young Nigerians? It, it, it now depends on what level you're talking about. So mm. is it going to be at presidential? As we're going to talk about senatorial? Are we talking about... So let's take, let's take it from the top. Okay, we should take it from, from the presidential. top. So presidential. See, uh, first and foremost, I think the first thing anyone should be thinking about is voting in Nigeria. If you're planning to vote a president... So I'm not saying they're not Nigerian. Uh, that's what I was going to ask next. You, you need to... Um, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm not saying they're not Nigerian, but what I'm saying is you're voting a Nigerian who's Nigerian by blood and right. his heart and his thought process. Mm -hmm. Not someone who... A patriotic Nigerian. Yes, not someone who believes in probably his tribe or his turn or something else. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel that's key first. Mm -hmm. Because I think at, at, at this point, Nigeria is at a brink of you know, national unity. Mm -hmm. And we should be thinking of voting a Nigerian first. The next thing would be someone who has a ready, clear-cut plan on what to do, because it's probably going to inherit an empty treasury. Mm. So going down, but no, we're being honest. Mm. So June 2023, no lofty ideas. How am I going to kickstart this economy in the first six months? Mm. Clearly how I'm going to run it till I can say budget. Yes. Until he gets his budget, his first budget, is he going to borrow? Is he going to uh, he tax? Going to is he going to, how's he going to do all that? And nobody seems to be presenting this, uh, answering these questions. Um, there are a lot of boring topics. We'd like to see how, what his thought process is clearly on security. Not I would end the problems in the Northeast. Or I, that's not a clear answer. You need to give us clear cut out steps. How are you going to Is do anybody it? right now that seems to give you some sort of clarity? None. None of them? No, none. It's, it, it's, it's, not, it's not good enough for you to say, I'm going to end the problems in the Southeast. I'm going to end the problems in the Northeast. Or I'm going to unify Nigeria. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, funny, from all the presidential candidates, I've never even heard anybody talk of border control. Mm. Now, we must understand that the problems of the Sudan, of the problems of Sahara, which is encroaching into Nigeria, of course, naturally, man moves towards water. It's getting people who are considered probably terrorists, rebels in Chad and funny places, they're sipping into Nigeria. Our borders are porous. I've not had any of the presidential candidates sit down and really look at what, because number one, if you're trying to protect a Nigeria, which is what Nigeria does, I'll give you a simple analogy. It's like you got a house, you rented a house, you bought a plasma screen, you, 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 you put CCTV, mm. but guess what? There are no burglar proofs and no gate of the house. Mm. It, it doesn't really make sense. You cannot guarantee internal security if you've not guaranteed the external security. Mm. And, and, you know, you're not having anybody talking like this. You're not having people like that. Um, I, for me, it's a big problem. Mm. And so those are the kind of things I think people should listen out for. Not the kind of things. Stop bothering where the person comes from or whether it's his turn or not his turn. Those are not important things. Um, or whether somebody has been, whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever the person has been. Because so you don't think experience counts? Let's take a journey down memory lane. Well, I'm, what country has someone with experience ever run properly show better? There's so much to presidency than experience. I mean, I mean the, the guys that have become, pres um, for instance, prime minister in the UK, after the, like, the last five ones have all had experience. Major experience. Not experience at being prime minister. No, of course not. You of know, not. That, that's, that's where not. the difference is. Mm, mm. So okay. an experience right. as prime minister, no, not necessarily. Well, and even if you do. President Joe Biden right now. Yes, has been a vice president. vice president. He's not doing, that's one out of many. Mm, uh, mm. Okay, let's come home. Let's bring it home. Mm. Our president was, our present president was once the president. I leave the conversation <laughs> <with that. laughs> So experience. So I, for one, I, I think you don't you don't really read Bari too well. <laughs> You're not comfortable with doing Bari running things in the country. Am I, am I right or right? <laughs> Officially, we all live in Nigeria, so <laughs> you can make that deduction. <laughs> That's interesting. So if you have to pick three sectors that are 
most paramount to you for any president to fix? Or what would they be? Security, health, economy. Hmm. Economy is very, very vast. I mean, economy can... can, can I, I would be looking at the private sector. Hmm. SMEs, most likely. Because if you look at the economies across the world that have developed or have galloped, it's not by having um, one big company like Microsoft, like we have one big company here. <laughs> but it's like having, it's, it's having thousands of SMEs that can thrive, can retrieve loans, can, can, um, they, can they have access to money to invest. Um, custom duties are, are not strenuous on them. That is how an economy grows. Multiple SMEs, they employ the next door people. I, I keep telling people, people say Nigeria doesn't have a welfare system. I think it does. And it's the civil service. Because for me, with over 1,500 MDs and multiple people employed that do not go to work, I, I, I should see a president that is thinking cutting down the SMEs, the uh, cutting the, down the, 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 the public, uh, the MDs by at least half. Isn't that and a capital the, B agenda? I mean, cut, government, he hasn't, cut government expenditure, he has just said, reduce government He's not staff. being clear. He just said cut government expenditure. Right. So yeah. let's not give him that, that as his credit. Mm. He just said cut government expenditure. But well, I am taking it the next notch and saying um, oh. take down these people. And then probably you can, if any of them is watching, this would be a good point. Probably you can, you can use the salaries that you were paying them to now uh, provide for banks as soft loans that people can get into private business mm. and, you know, do something with it. Uh, isn't that what they're trying to achieve with this, um, I mean, sort of, with this um, CBM policies on, on cash, change of Naira nodes, you know, sort of, you know, gather money back from the people into the banking yeah. system, and the banks can use it to give out. You know what, let's go back to the candidates you're talking about. I don't want to talk about CBM. For me, it's like a dog chasing his tail. Back to what I was saying. So you don't believe in this CBM policy? This guy, I don't know what talking about. No, no, I need to know your opinion on this. Do you, you think that the, the CBN was right in making that cash withdrawal? My, my problem is not with the policy. Right. My problem is with the cost of the policy to Nigeria right now. Mm -hmm. So, averagely, to, to print Naira notes, you know it costs money. So, it costs about 58.6 billion to print 2.5 billion Naira. That's without changing it. Now, the cost of reprinting, recreating, uh, or Redesigning. Putting uh, blue in. in sorry, I, sorry, I meant redesign. <laughs> uh, the, the Naira has not been quoted. Mm. And that means it's quite a lot of money. And at a time where our value of our money is dropping, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. That's basic economics. Mm. But, you know, the excuses of election, it's here, yeah, it's, yeah, which I, I, I feel don't fly. Because as we've seen, even from the primaries, our politicians no longer use Naira, they are dealing in dollars. So I, I don't know what, what you're talking about, <laughs> except they're going to get America to change the dollar too. So do you think that, do you think that the, 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 the CBM has been hypocritical? Or do you think it's an agenda to, you know, disenfranchise some sort of political people? For me, I'm going to put it simply. I don't know what it was, but I know it's not important. Mm. So back to... So wrong time. Wrong time. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, um, Fair enough, fair enough. So back to the kind of candidates. So we've spoken about presidency. We'll go yeah. to Senate, which is National Assembly. Um, now, if you're going to um, listen to someone who's running for office or who has been in National Assembly and wants to return, the kind of things I like you, you should be looking out for is people that are actually proposing bills. We must remember that constituency projects are non-constitutional. And they are not uh, sensible, uh, you get. And no, everybody just says constituency project, constituency projects. That's robbing money from local government. But that's another thing. Let's come back to. So the primary function is executive oversight of the legislature, is executive oversight and amendment or creation of laws. Now you have people that have spent time in, uh, in um, like for example, I think um, the senator for Lagos Central. I'll not mention the name. But the person has been there for over 14 years now. Cost of Nigeria in allowances is about 2.1 billion. And you've co-sponsored one bill and sponsored one bill. Poor. Hmm. They are doing constructive projects. They're building, you know, <laughs> health facilities and all. How has that changed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what they do. I mean, I had, I had a legislator here one time and he said that because of the nature of the country, that's why they sort of, you know, sort of, um, 
should I say, did a hybrid sort of. It's like a hybrid legislative. It's not the nature of the country. If everybody has, is quick to forget about democracy in Nigeria, mm. let's remember our constituency came, projects came out. Mm. It was um, 2005, I think, or six. Um, the, the Senate was really on the presidency's case as regards third term. Mm. And they decided to give them a little largesse to be able to spend money. And that, that's what happened. Right. And it's not constitutional. So that's the history. So, that's how it came about. Yeah, so it's supposed okay. to have stopped after the Obasanjo mm -hmm. term. But it seems uh, it is it is The largesse was... <laughs> <That's continued. laughs> interesting, interesting.